Hi. So thanks for the V Brown Bag uh, guys for arranging uh, this and letting uh, me come and present. And um, today I'm going to take you through the simplicity of software-defined disaster recovery and Zerto virtual replication. My name is Joshua Stenhouse and I'm a solutions engineer for Zerto and I'm going to see just how quickly I can get my uh, enterprise disaster recovery replication up and running in my demo environment. So just to clarify, Zerto is an enterprise class virtual replication and disaster recovery solution for your virtual data center. And it doesn't matter if you're a small environment with 10 or 15 virtual machines up to a huge enterprise or cloud, the same challenge exists, which is simply protecting your virtual machines. And when I say disaster recovery, everybody knows there are many different solutions available and the different technologies that they use. But out of these other different solutions that are available, only one of them is really considered enterprise in class, and that is replicating at the storage layer and then using something maybe like Site Recovery Manager to integrate that into the virtual environment. Zerto is the new way of doing disaster recovery because we're replacing the storage-based replication and we're removing and moving the replication into the hypervisor and giving all of the enterprise functionality but just the simplicity of being able to select the virtual machines you want to protect. So a complete replacement for your storage-based replication and SRM if you have that. So here I just have a basic architecture, a primary and a recovery site with some hosts and a vCenter in both. And the primary reason being if you lose your primary site and vCenter, then you need a recovery site to log into to manage the disaster recovery. So we have our Zerto virtual managers, and that's our software that we install which integrates into vCenter, and that's what I'm gonna do for you right now in my demo lab. So here you can see I have my primary vCenter with some virtual machines, a vCenter server, some test VMs, and then behind that I have my recovery site with some more virtual machines, another vCenter server, and in each of those, I have a Windows virtual machine with a static IP, server 2008, it could be 03, and this is where I'm going to install the Windows service that is the Zerto virtual manager. So let's load the console, and to save time, I'm gonna install on both Zerto virtual managers to each vCenter at the same time. I've already run the .NET installer, but if you downloaded this, run this first just to double check. And we'll click run and run. So simple license agreement. I'm fine with C program files. And then here Zerto is just confirming. Oh, sorry. Zerto is just confirming the IP that we're going to use to communicate with vCenter and then the ports Zerto are going to use. Because I've provisioned a separate VM, I can leave these as default. I'll just put in the site name. And this is just free text that's shown in the Zerto GUI. And then the important piece, which is asking for the vCenter that I'm going to link this to which should be the vCenter address for the site that you're installing the Zerto virtual manager in. And then we need a username and password with vCenter admin permissions. Best practice would be a separate service account. I'm not configuring any vCard director integration, so we'll skip past this. Next. And then Zerto is simply going to check that we can communicate with vCenter and the credentials are working. And this is just the same as loading a local vSphere client. If this doesn't work, check you can ping vCenter, check that you don't have any proxy settings that might be stopping us accessing the vCenter web service, etc. And whilst we're waiting for that, I'm just going to repeat the exact same steps on my recovery site. And importantly here, I'm using my secondary site, vCenter, and not trying to link them both to the same one. That definitely wouldn't give you disaster recovery. And because I'm using the vCenter appliances, I'm just going to use the root credentials much easier. 
So you can see all of my checks there have passed. So now I can click next, next, and Zerto is now going to install into the vCenter by creating our plugin, which essentially just gives us a web interface and runs all the management tasks. And then we can then configure our protection groups and deploy our appliances. And just out of interest, you can uninstall Zerto very easily. You know, just because it's creating alarms and permissions in vCenter doesn't mean that it's you know, impossible to take it out. A very simple control panel and install, and it completely removes itself. So in terms of trialing it, you can do it in a production environment and not be worried about messing around with your vCenter. We'll just check on the progress in the recovery site. All the tests are successful, so we'll do next, next. And in our primary site, site one ZVM, this is finished. So there isn't actually anything more we need to do from this server. There are some local diagnostics tools installed that allow you to collect logs and upload them. But there's nothing else to do from this vCenter. And I'm actually just going to log out of the vCenter and then log back in. I think we're about five, six minutes in. I hope someone's got a stopwatch on me. So when you first install Zerto on initial collection, it is gonna run, so I think I've jumped the gun. I'll leave that another minute. And let's check on my secondary site. So the configuration is finished, OK. And just to show you the tool that is installed, we have the Zerto Diagnostics. And this is what you can use for testing the connectivity, exporting, importing settings, and also collecting both Zerto, ESXi, and vCenter logs if you have ever had an issue. So. Let's close down both vCenters. And then I'll log back into my primary. Okay, so I'm now just going to right click and enable the Zerto plugin and the first warning I get is just around a security certificate, just the same as when you first deploy vCenter, etc. So I'm just going to click to install and ignore. And you can see when I've clicked on the data center or vCenter icon, I now have a new tab along the top, which is my Zerto tab. This is just loading a web page. If this doesn't work in any way, then it's usually going to be some sort of local proxy setting that's actually stopping you accessing the IP address on your Zerto appliance. And you can see just another security warning. You can view install into trusted root or put your own on Zerto. I'm just going to click yes for now. And you can see my Zerto is now waiting for a license. And I'm just going to do the exact same in my recovery site. Whilst that's just starting, let me just place my license in here. So Zerto is now installed in my primary site. And before I can replicate anything, I need at least one virtual replication appliance, which is our small Linux virtual machine. So coming back to the presentation here, we've installed our Zerto virtual managers. Once we have applied the license in both sites, we now need to deploy our replication appliances. And these are what replicate on a per VM basis between the sites. So it's VM level replication from the hypervisor. We're not relying on the underlying storage. And so the first key benefit is we can replicate from anything to anything because 
it's between the hypervisors. It doesn't matter what the underlying storage is. It could be one storage vendor in one site or local disk in another. It just doesn't matter. And the benefit of having these appliances means that we have built-in scalability. Because we have one per host, this is how the same Zerto software can protect the small environments to the very large. And then once we have these deployed, we'll configure some replication. And once we have that replication configured, I'll show you that Zerto replicates continuously as the changes are occurring, giving a recovery point objective of seconds and we don't use any snapshots, so we have no performance impact in the virtual machines that we're protecting. So in my primary site, let's install a replication appliance. Apologies for the uh, resolution on this, but we'll do our best. So I'll click Install New VRA, and I'm going to select the host, enter the root password, The data store to host it on, it's only a 12 gig appliance. It can be a local data store, it doesn't matter. The network to use for the replication traffic that needs to be routable between the two sites, I'm gonna keep it very simple and VM network. The amount of VRA RAM for a large environment, I recommend three gig, small to medium, two gig. For my dev environment, because I'm quite limited on host, I'll just do one. The VRA group setting is only for single vCenter use cases, which is a different topic altogether. And then we just need an IP address for my replication appliance, which has to be available on the network and routable between the sites. And best practice is to use a static IP and not DHCP. So I'm happy with that. all those details there. I'll just click Install. And if we expand the tasks, we're now gonna see Zerto deploy the OVF appliance automatically to the host, configure it with the information, and power it on, ready to do the replication. And there's no point waiting, so we might as well do the exact same process in the recovery site. Just log out and back in. Just check what's going on here. I'm just going to give this a quick reboot, fixes everything in Windows. So back in the primary site, we can see the appliance is deploying. Zerto has created this VM here. You can rename this, but I recommend to keep the same name and then just append maybe the host name on the end. And you can also just change the folder. I'll put it into my Zerto folder here. And this virtual replication appliance is just a small Linux virtual machine, completely managed by Zerto. It's our own custom Linux build. So you don't have to manage that separately or deploy anything for each host.
So apologies, I've definitely just made a mistake. But this is good. So you can see the error I'm getting here, and it's saying that I'm unable to download the script from 192.168.1.116. There's nothing mystic here. The plugin is just a web page, and straight away I can tell you that my local lab is not on that IP address. I'm on 0 0.2, and there's no router in between, so I can't ping that. And the reason being is on my Zerto virtual manager here, if I remember correctly, I have two network adapters. And I've just indicated the wrong one. So, very quick to fix. So I might as well show you how easy it is to uninstall. And whilst we're waiting for that, in the primary site you can see my appliance is deployed here and we have a green light. So this screen is just confirming that the appliance is running and we could now click install if we had multiple hosts and do more. You don't have to wait for one to finish, you can do them at the same time. And to get back to that screen, you simply click on the settings cog and then manage VRAs and you're back on this manage VRA screen. You can also click edit and at the bottom here we also have the uninstall upgrade and change host root password functions for just day-to-day -day operations. And on this removing backup files, it's just simply removing all of the items that we created in vCenter, all the alarms and the permissions that are integrated into Zerto. So this site, I only have one host, and my primary site is configured, and it's sat waiting for us to pair the sites together so that I can then create my first protection group. It's finished. So very quickly now, and I'll make sure I select the right IP address. Always helps. I think to avoid this, I'd recommend having your Zerto virtual manager server with a single NIC and not multi-homed like mine. There we go. Next. So checks are finished, next, next, go. And whilst we're waiting for that, we'll come back to the presentation. So in a minute, we're gonna show the recovery point objective of seconds. But then another feature in Zerto is that we also keep a journal of all the changes in the recovery site. And the important benefit of this is that it allows you to fail over to the point in time before a logical failure occurred. So it's not just protecting you against losing your primary site, it also protects you against a system-wide virus, a database corruption, or user error, because you can fail over the virtual machines to the point in time before that error occurred. And once we have our appliances running, the replication between the appliances has built-in bandwidth optimization and compression. We're typically compressing everything between 60 and 80%. Zerto replicates over a standard IP link, so you can throttle the replication between working hours and we have built-in WAN resiliency, so if the link goes down, we'll automatically self-heal and get back into the continuous replication state. And the most important concept with the Zerto replication engine is that if there's nothing changing, then there's nothing to replicate. So rather than the continuous replication being very bandwidth, bandwidth intensive, depending on the makeup of the data and what's actually changing, 
sometimes it can be less intensive because you're replicating it as it's changing rather than storing it all up in a snapshot. And then once we have our sites paired and both appliances, we're going to create a virtual protection group. And this is our logical grouping of virtual machines that is also a consistency grouping which ensures all of the virtual machines that together form a single application are recovered to the exact same point in time, ensuring that the disaster recovery data is consistent. And once you've created that group, the day-to-day -day changes that happen in the virtual environment aren't going to break the replication, such as a simple vMotion between hosts, adding, removing, or resizing a disk. It just, you specify the service level settings, and away you go. So we've installed Zerto second site. I'll just log back into my vCenter. We'll wait for the initial collection to finish. And in the primary site, we have our tabs along the top. So the VPGs shows each of the virtual protection groups that you have running, including all of the statistics and the key points to cover. So in terms of you know provision storage, etc. So all the KPIs. You can also see a list of all the protected VMs. If you had multiple sites, they would be listed down here. And then we also have a topology diagram and our built-in reports and alerts. OK, fantastic. So I'll install the same certificate, close, go to the Zerto tab, yes. And I'm just going to use the same license in both sites. They'll share it once they're linked anyway. And then let's install our appliance in my second site. Very important that the IP addresses between the appliances in each site can speak to each other because the replication is between the appliances. So if they can't talk, then they definitely can't replicate. And we'll see the exact same actions here. So Zerto deploying an OVF appliance to our host. And again, if I had multiple hosts, I could start them all and do them one by one. And the really cool thing with the appliance is you don't have to put the host in maintenance mode. You can install it with no downtime and no impact in production. And also uninstall it from the host with no impact in production. So that should be a couple of minutes yet. And then when that's running, we'll pair the sites, we'll create a protection group, and then we can show you that Zerto is not just replicating the data continuously, maintaining the consistency using the protection group. We're also replicating all of the virtual machine files, the disk configurations, and the network settings, which means we give a recovery time objective of minutes. And everything that you would need to be done automatically, such as specifying a boot order, automatically reconfiguring IP addresses if you have a different IP subnet, and running any post failover scripts is all done automatically by Zerto after just a few clicks to initiate the failover. So that is how simple Zerto makes disaster recovery, just a few clicks. We also give the ability to test the failover, and so in the same few clicks, we'll bring the virtual machines online in the recovery site, connect them to an isolated network and power them on, so you can actually do your disaster recovery testing in working hours with no impact in production and no break in the replication. And then finally, failback with Zerto is as simple as a single checkbox where we automatically reverse the protection and start replicating the changes for failback. You don't have to recreate all the jobs. You don't have to resend all of the data. Just a simple checkbox. You can see the virtual machine has been deployed. It's just been reconfigured, and we're going to boot it in a second and wait for our light to go green. And this light is merely indicating that 
the Zerto virtual manager can communicate with this appliance. So if it doesn't go green, then it's going to be some form of IP connectivity issue from your Zerto manager to your application appliance. If the two can't communicate, then the management server can't see its child, so it's not going to be able to replicate. But again, there's no mystical magic going on on this part. It is simple. You've given the appliance an IP. Its management server needs to be able to communicate with that once you turn it on. So you can see the appliance has been booted. And it's important to see that this is completely managed by Zerto. You don't have to go and download a separate appliance and manually upload it to the data store and configure it and power it on. We're going to just simply ask for the information and then do all of the legwork for you. Very easy. You can see it's installed on the latest version and we'll just wait one second for this to go green. There we go. So that's now gone green, and we've now got our replication appliances deployed in each site. Um, we're just about to run out of time, maybe five. So very quickly, I'm just going to pair my sites together. So this is a one-time operation. You only need to do from one site. You don't have to do it in both. I'll click Add New Site, and then I need to enter in the IP address of the opposing Zerto Virtual Manager server, not the vCenter. But you can install Zerto on a Windows vCenter if you want. It's just for performance reasons. Quite often vCenters are very you know, memory and uh, CPU intense, intensive. So it is much better to have Zerto on its own server. So it's 115 and pair. We'll just wait for the red X to disappear. Okay, so the recovery is, site is now linked to the primary, and if we check the primary, then that's linked as well. So currently we have nothing replicating. Let's create our first virtual protection group. And here you can see, I'll just give it a name of test. And here we have our general priority settings. So this is just the service level agreement on the protection group. The priority is a quality of service. The target RPO is an alarm. If the RPO goes above that, it will trigger a vCenter alarm. The history is the amount of changes to keep in our journal stored in the target site. You can also specify a different data store to host it up to five days and change the maximum journal size per VM. Test frequency is just an alarm and you can disable our built-in compression with a checkbox. So these are just the default settings for this group. I'm going to select the host to replicate to the data store the network to use for a failover, the network to use for a failover test, and that's something I've created by hand in advance. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be, standard or distributed switch in the recovery site. And the only best practice is that make sure it's not routable, otherwise your disaster recovery tests definitely will have an impact. And those are the default settings of the group. I just click Add. I select my virtual machine. I'll use my test one, OK and then click Save. So Zerto is now going to do an initial replication of this VM between the sites and then get into the continuous replication state. You can pre-seed if you want. But the important thing here is that this is an enterprise replication engine with a recovery point objective of seconds with no snapshots. And to replicate a new VM, I've just done a few clicks, specified my SLA, and added the VM. If you compare that to the previous way of doing disaster recovery, where if you had a new set of virtual machines to replicate, you'd have to go and get some a new data store, make sure the new data store is replicated. That might be handled by a different team in a different interface. You then have to place the right virtual machines on that data store and then maybe configure them to integrate into SRM. It's a lot of complexity, and that complexity only increases as the size of your virtual environment grows. And so you can see with Zerto that in just a few clicks, I can create my protection group and start replicating my VMs. 
And because this is just a test VM, it hasn't taken long to sync. You can see that it's currently protecting and we have a recovery point objective of seconds. If we go back to the summary screen, you can see I now have one virtual protection group replicating from primary to recovery. And on the VPGs, I can see that listed here. And very quickly to finish, not only was it relatively easy to install apart from my little mistake, it was also very easy to create this protection group. And just to show you how easy it is to do a test failover, you simply select the protection group to test. I've only got one because we just set it up. You can also select the previous point in time to test or fail over to. And this is just using the journal. We don't have far to go back because we only just created it. But you can see it's just a simple time slider. And we'll click Next, Fail Over. And if we come across to the recovery site, you can see Zerto is automatically building this fail over test for us. It's connected the virtual machine to the vSwitch that I specified, which was my isolated test, test network. And it's going to power it on so I can log into the console and do the disaster recovery testing in working hours, which is what I was talking about in the PowerPoint show. But the important thing is you can see we're building the failover test, but this VM is still running in production and we're still replicating the changes. So simple to install, simple to replicate, very, very simple to test. So you can see that's powered on and Zerto's built the failover test. Let's say I've logged into the console, everything worked okay. I'll select that it was a successful result. Click stop selected and close. And then easily, as easily as Zerto built the failover test, it's now gonna delete that VM from the inventory, tidy up after itself. Very, very simple. And you can produce a, sim a disaster recovery report detailing the outcome of that testing, including the detailed recovery steps undertaken by Zerto. And so this is an overview of all the different steps that you would have previously had to go through, which I mentioned of replicating at the storage layer. And what I've shown you is the new way of doing software-defined disaster recovery using Zerto. And if I can get it up and running and make mistakes and still do it in around 30 minutes, then you have a very good idea of how easy this is to use, install, and manage. And as your virtual environment grows, replicating on a per VM basis allows you to realize the benefits of virtualization in that the whole point of virtualization was to remove physical ties. Yet, we've carried on doing disaster recovery at a physical level in a physical world. Replication and disaster recovery now needs to move into the hypervisor for all the same reasons that it was a no-brainer to virtualize in the first place. So that's all Zerto is doing, is sim simple software-defined disaster recovery. Please come to our booth. We have some free trials if anyone's viewing this while still at the event. And also, if you're interested in a free trial, come to our website. Case studies available. And thank you for watching this video and presentation.